Uh, welcome to another video on COVID and heart disease coming to you from Victor Chan Cardiac Research Institute. Today it's a great pleasure for me to introduce my colleague, Professor uh, Sally Dunwoody, who is one of the world's experts on the causes of congenital heart disease. Uh, and before we get into that, Sally, um, there's been a new entity that's just come to, to the fore in people who are being exposed to COVID and that is a disease called Kawasaki's disease. Can you tell us a little about that and is that a concern? Yes, Bob. So Kawasaki disease first identified in, in Japan. Um, it's associated with a, a rash and a high fever and some swelling of the, of the hands and the feet. And it's basically, um, you have a, an inflammation of your blood vessels. Now, there have been some cases associated with COVID-19 around the world. And I think, Bob, you, you know quite a lot more about that. Yes, look, there's been, we've been in touch with our colleagues overseas and there are some 30 cases at the moment in hospitals in London and it's also been reported in Spain and Italy and Switzerland, so it's probably a real phenomenon, although not all kids so far have tested positive for COVID, most of them have, that may be a testing issue and it does look like it's COVID associated. Hopefully it responds as well as most uh, Kawasaki's does to aspirin and immunoglobulins uh, and so far there have been no uh, death from this uh, disorder in children. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to treat it as well as we treat regular Kawasaki's, which is a very rare condition generally. Mm -hmm. So Sally, let's move on now to the real topic of this video, which is congenital heart disease, and we've had lots of questions about that. Uh, one of them, of course, is, is my child who's got congenital heart disease more likely to get it, and if they get it, they're more likely to do poorly than mm -hmm. someone who doesn't have the general heart. And of course, this is, a, this is a real concern for all parents, but especially uh, for parents who, who have children with congenital heart disease. So at the moment, uh, there is no evidence that a child born with congenital heart disease, which is a, uh, a, a structural difference in their heart, and it's repaired by, by surgery after birth, that they have any more, uh, they're any more likely of being infected by COVID-19. And as I'm sure everyone was probably aware, the children uh, represent a really small percentage of cases um, of COVID-19 um, individuals. So only about 1% of uh, children, sorry if I've got that wrong, it's only about 1% of cases that have been identified worldwide at the moment have appeared in children who are 10 years or younger and only 2% uh, of the worldwide cases in, in individuals who are 20 years and, and under. So uh, COVID-19 does not infect children uh, at the same level as it does adults. And there's no reason at the moment to expect that children with congenital heart disease would be any different to any other child. So Sally, how about those who've got, say, a heart disease which has not been fully corrected? They still have con a cyanotic congenital heart disease or they've got uh, an immu immune problem such as the George syndrome or, or a splenia with your lack of spleen uh, or Down syndrome, where they commonly have congenital heart disease. Yeah. So, Bob, yes, a very important question and a very important question for parents. So, uh, the information that we know about children, uh, they represent a very small proportion of COVID-19 positive cases. And of children who are infected, only 10% uh, of those end up in hospital. And that's just to get some, some oxygen relief and, and some care in that way. Uh, no different to any other sort of winter virus. So for the majority of congenital heart disease children who've had their heart surgically repaired, uh, they, there's no evidence to suggest that they would be more sick um, having been infected with COVID-19. However, the, um, a small number of, or a lower proportion of CF, congenital heart disease patients might have um, impaired heart function, cyanotic disease, as you mentioned, so that um, uh, and, and they can be um, breathless as well. And so these individuals uh, possibly would be more affected by COVID-19 infection. So uh, what would you say to that, Bob? Should this population be more careful? Uh, should they alert their, their doctors ahead of time? What do you think? Yeah, look, absolutely, Sally. I think it's always wise to consult your cardiologist and uh, if you're all worried, and I think they should take special care to try and avoid getting COVID if they can. So Sally, now a real uh, difficult one that comes up all the time. Should, if my child has congenital heart disease, should I allow them to go to daycare or the school? So that, that's, that, that really is, a, is a, a big big question and a big concern for parents. I mean, we all... Um, we all uh, love our children dearly and, and, and worry about them 
at every stage of their lives. So I think that um, really it comes down to not all children born with congenital heart disease have the same extent of disease. And the majority of cases, the surgical correction uh, is, is essentially all that's needed for, for the children. However, there are some cases, the minority of cases, who have underlying, or, um, or not underlying, actually uh, obvious um, poor heart function. And so for those ones, maybe you need to be more ca careful. And I really would recommend going to see their cardiologist because they will know very specifically um, the condition of your child's heart and would be able to help you devise a, a, a way forward uh, through this difficult time. But again, um, really the main thing is to try and avoid catching it in the first place. Mm. So are women who are pregnant, are uh, they at, at a higher risk of getting COVID or having problems when they get COVID? And how about the baby they're carrying? So I think, Bob, there's not a, a, a lot of evidence to suggest, or there's no evidence to suggest that a, a pregnant woman is more likely to be infected by COVID-19. Uh, you haven't heard anything to the contrary? You don't no, there's very little written about it so far, and all those cases, uh, most of them have gone, who have had COVID and, and are pregnant, have gone on to have C-section deliveries. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no good evidence that there's vertical transmission, that is transmission from mother to baby, either when they're pregnant or after them when they're, when they're breastfeeding. So that's good news. Uh, we don't know what happens if you have a regular vaginal delivery. So hopefully they won't be at increased risk, but, but uh, that's something to worry about. But uh, we, uh, we don't think that pregnancy is a big problem. And there have been women who've had COVID who've given birth and done very well. Yes, so, so at this point in time, there's no evidence that COVID-19 uh, is more, you are more likely to become infected uh, if you're pregnant or indeed that it would uh, cause the majority of pregnant women uh, to have more severe symptoms of, of any kind. But of course, again, it's about it's about being careful and cautious, looking after yourself so that you don't uh, become infected, and to monitor your monitor your symptoms if you're pregnant. And if you have any concerns, you would go to um, maternity clinics and and doctors to get the best advice for you. And, and as you know, Bob, uh, testing is now more readily available for us here in Australia, even if we have just mild respiratory symptoms, or even now I've heard some asymptomatic, sure. you can go along and be tested. So I think we're in a better position than we were a month ago uh, with a lot more testing here in Australia. Yeah, and I certainly you bring up a good point. I mean, it's really been an enormous credit to Australia, to the Australian government and the Australian people who have listened to the, the calls for social distancing. We have actually not only flattened the curve, we've crushed it. We have one of the lowest incidents of COVID infections and in COVID death in the world. 270 cases per million and of infections and about 3.7 cases per million of death, which is, each death is tragic, we know that, but still that's enormously better than most other countries in the world. So we can be very pleased and proud of that. And I think parents can rest easy knowing that, that uh, we do a lot better here in Australia than the rest of the world. Indeed, and I guess the one thing to remember now is as restrictions might be becoming uh, lifted in terms of social isolation and getting back to work a little bit, is to still be really vigilant uh, because it, you know, we don't want outbreaks um, and we, we want to keep a lid on this. So uh, we would recommend that you download the government uh, app to make sure that uh, they can very easily track who you've been in contact with should you become uh, COVID-19 positive. And we really need to protect our healthcare workers as much as we can, because it's an absolute tragedy that they should be losing their lives uh, treating, treating people with COVID-19. Well, Sally, thank you very much. It's been an honor having you on the program. Uh, I should have mentioned that I'm Professor Bob Graham. I'm a cardiologist. Uh, I work here at the Victor Chang and also at St. Vincent's Hospital. And uh, we've done a number of these videos and we thank you. Uh, they're available on our website. You can access them very easily if you're interested for things other than congenital heart disease. Uh, uh, so look, look after yourselves and please maintain the social distancing, hand washing and all those other practices. We don't want you to get COVID, uh, but we're here to help if we can. Thank you very much for watching.